All right, welcome back. In this video, we'll take a look at how to use message dialogs, input dialogs, as well as find dialogs within WX Python. And at the end, we will make use of all of the things that we have learned to create a simple to do list application. All right, so to start off, first showcase how to make use of the message dialog. You can find a starter code in the GitHub link in the description below under the name of example underscore message dialog.py. And within this starter code, I've just created a simple button. Then when we click it, we want it to show a message dialog. So what I'll first do is to bind an event handler to it. And I already showcased how we can work with events in the previous video. But essentially what we are going to do is we use self to bind and set the event as evt underscore button to listen for button clicks. Set the handler to self dot click handler which is a method i'll create in a moment and the source as the button so i'll create the click handler method over here that will be executed once the button has been clicked and this will also accept an event argument even though we are not going to use it we will still need to accept it so to create the message dialog i'll create a new variable called dialog and that will be sent to wx.message dialog we should initialize a new message dialog this expects a parent as the first argument i'll specify that to be self since that refers to our parent instance and we also need to pass in a message in this case i'll just create an example message and to and to actually show the dialog we need to use the show model method and if we run our application and click on the button now, we have a simple message dialog that shows our message. Now there are a few ways to customize this dialog. The first one is to change the buttons on the dialog. To do this, we can set the style keyword argument to for example wx not yes underscore no. And this changes the button to yes and no buttons. And we can also specify another style to set the icon. For example, we can set the icon to be an error icon. And note that I'm using the pipe symbol here to separate the options since we are specifying two different options here. And this changes the icon of our message dialog. There are other icons such as on icon underscore information. And if you're wondering where you can find a list of all of this options and styles they can use you can go to the wx python documentation which i'll link below and you can find all of the possible options there when we create a message dialog we usually also want to know if the user clicked on the yes button or the no button and the way that we do that is that we need to store the return value when we use the show model method what this show method does is that is that once the user has closed out of the dialog, it returns the button that the user has clicked on. So what you can do is you can store the return value when it's verbal like so. And we can then use a simple if statement to check what button the user has clicked on. And this will be id underscore the name of the button. For example, that we start on id underscore yes. And I'll just print on something if they did click yes. And if we run our application, that part of the code is only ran if the user clicked on the yes button. And this can be really useful if, for example, you want to let the user confirm if they want to take a certain action. And then you can only run that part of the code when the user has clicked on the yes button. You can also further customize the buttons by using dialog.set yes no labels. And what this does is that it changes the labels of the button. So the first argument it takes in is the label for the yes button. I'll make this as continue. And the second argument is the label for the no button. I'll specify this to be don't continue. And if we run the application, we can see that the labels have changed accordingly to what we have specified. And just make sure that you set this before you actually show the model so that it is actually applied to the dialog. All right, the next dialog we'll take a look at it. Is using the text entry dialog which allows us to receive input from the user through a dialog 
So once again, I have to start the code here. And in this case, I've already created a click handler and I've bind it in a button click as well. And in case you're wondering, I've used the pass keyword here so that we won't run into an error even though we have nothing inside this method currently. So to start what we can first do is to create a verb to start the dialog and then we can use wx.text entry dialog. This expects a parent. In this case, we also use self as the parent and we can then specify a message. So I'll just use enter your name for example if this were and if this was a dialog to get the user's name. We will also use the same show mode or method. And this gives us a simple pre-made input dialog that we can use. I will also store the button that has been clicked on when the user closes this model like we did previously. And for this dialog, it either returns the OK button or the cancel button. So I'll check if the user clicked on the OK button. And if they didn't change their mind, then we will execute a certain part of the script to use their input. And we can get the input using the get value method from the dialog. In this case, I'll just print it out at the terminal. And so if I enter my name and I click OK, then it's printed at the terminal. But if I entered my name and I clicked on cancel or I exit out of the dialog, then that part of the script will not be executed. We can also set the value using the set value method of the dialog. If for example, we wanted to set a default value. And once again, make sure that you do that before you show the model so that it actually applies to the dialog. All right, and the last dialog that we'll work on here is the file dialog that allows the user to select a file that is on their device. And you can also find the starter code in an example folder with two different file types that I'll use in a moment in the GitHub link below. So to create the file dialog, we will use wx.file dialog. I'll specify the parent as self. And we can also specify a message. This will go at the top of the file dialog, sort of as the title. If we run an application now, we can see that we have a simple, we have a dialog that allows the user to select a file. Right now, the user can select any file type but what, what you usually want is to restrict the user to select a certain file type and the way that we do that is by using specify the wildcard keyword argument and specifying something for example asterisk.png and what this does here is that it will accept any file that ends with .png the asterisk means there can be anything there so basically this will allow the user to enter any png files and if we run the application now, we can see that only the PNG files are showing and the other JPEG file is not showing when we use this dialog. Currently, the user can create new files within the dialog by simply entering a new file name within the dialog. This can be really useful if you want the user to create new files within your application. But if, for example, you are using this dialog to allow the user to open a previously saved file then you probably want to restrict this dialog to only accept files that already exist. And the way that we do that is by specifying the style keyword argument to, for example, wx.fd underscore file must exist. And this is just a styling option that ensures the user is selecting a file that already exists. And so now if we try to use our dialog to create a new file, for example, and that file doesn't exist, then we will get an error directly from the dialog. And another option that we can specify, which I'll separate with the same pipe symbol, is whether we want the dialog to allow the user to open a new file or to save their file, which you can specify like so. And this just changes the buttons within the dialog. Another option is fd underscore save, which 
which changes the button to save and cancel but I'll just change my back to FD underscore open and we can do the same thing of checking if the user clicked on the wish button in this case this show map model method will only return either ID underscore OK or ID underscore cancel so although the buttons within the file dialog either says open or save we need to check for it by using ID underscore OK just because that's what the show model method returns here and if the user did click on either open or save in the case that they didn't change their mind we can then execute a certain part of the script in this case I'll just print out the path of the file that I've selected which you can use the get path method which, which returns the absolute file path of the file that I've selected all right, and the last thing that I'll showcase how to do is to use what we've learned with all of the dialogues so far to create a simple to-do list application. And I've included this starter code in the same GitHub link in the description below. And I've already set it up all the widgets that we will need as well as the layout. If you're wondering how to create layouts within Apex Python to create the layouts that you need for your application. I've showcased how to do that in one of my previous video in this tutorial series which you can find on my channel as well. So when the user clicks on the add task button we will show a dialog that allows them to enter a new task that is then added to this list widget that we have. And when they click on the export task, it allows them to store all of the tasks that they have added within a text file. And we will use a file dialog to let them choose that file. And the widget that I've used to display the task is using a list box, which just displays multiple strings with a single line each, which you'll see in a moment. So I'll first work on the add handler over here that is executed when the user clicks on the add button. And what I want to do first is to create a new text entry dialog to allow the user to enter the task. And I'll just ask the user to enter a new task. And if they did click on the OK button, so if they didn't change their mind, then I'll add it to the list widget, which you can do using the pen method and specify the string that you want to be added to the list widget. And we can then just specify the item that we want to be added to the list widget as a string. In this case, I just want the value of the input dialog, which you can once again get using the get value method. So now whatever I specify within the input widget will be added to the list widget like so. And that just displays it to the user. And you can feel free to add more validations such as to check if to check if the user did actually enter something within the input widget. Alright, so now I'll work on the save handler which will open a file dialog to allow the user to create a new file that they want all of the tasks that have ended to be saved to. But before we can save it to a file, we'll first need a way of getting all of the tasks that the user have entered within the list widget. And the way that we get that is using self.list.get strings, which returns a list of all of the strings that is within the list widget. But when I save it to this file, I want to separate them by, by a new line. So what we want to do is to use the join method like so. I'm specifying a new line as a string, which is what will be used to separate each string within our list. And what the join method here does is that it just returns a new string, which each value of our list separated by whatever we specify. In the front here, in this case, I've just specified them to be separated by a new line. If we test our application again, we can see that what's printed to our terminal is the task being separated. 
each with its own line and so that's what we will save to the file so now we will work on creating the file dialog using wx.file dialog I'll also specify a wildcard to restrict file types. Our dialog is accepting here. And I'll specify any files ending with .txt so that we're only accepting text files here. I'll also specify if the underscore save as a style so that it creates the save button within the file dialog. And remember that even though the user will click on the save button, what the button that is written here is the OK button since that is just what the show model method returns here. And the way that we write to files using Python is using a context manager which you can write like so. And the first argument that the open function here expects is the full path of the file that we're trying to open which you can get using the get path method from the file dialog. And also specifying mode of W which stands for write. So this will allow us to write to the file and also note that this will overwrite the file if it already exists. I'll specify this as, as file so they can refer to it as this variable. We can then use file.write and specify the string as the value that we want to be written to the file. In this case, we just want all of the tasks being separated by new lines, which we have already done up here, so I'll just copy it over. So now if we test if our application is working, we can see that whenever we add a new task, it is added to the list widget, and we can also save it within our device. And all of the tasks are then added accordingly. And that's all for this video. If this video has helped you, please consider possibly liking this video or subscribing to my channel to help my channel and to watch more such content.